we are happy for miracles to happen. Yes. But we've changed the name to Blessing Service after a word that came from um, Brother Dale. And because um, we're walking in the blessings of the Lord. Amen. And every blessing of his is ours. And that includes healing. That includes all kinds of things. Amen. Prosperity, etc. And uh, so we're just going to, tonight we're just going to bless the Lord. We're going to just worship in that blessing and, uh, and uh, just see what God wants to do tonight. Amen. So if you want to stand.
going to touch us. You're going to heal us. You're going to bring deliverance. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, open up your heart. Just let him in. He's knocking at your door. He wants to sup with you. He said, I've come to your house. I chose you tonight. Oh, like he said to Zacchaeus, come on down from that tree. Because I'm going to your place tonight. I'm going to your place tonight. Hallelujah. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. Holy Spirit, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We abandon ourselves to you. Father God, Lord, we come right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, it says you sent your word and to heal. And 
Lord, you just gave us a word tonight. You yes. sent your word. Now you're healing. Yes. We're speaking of healing to these bodies, to these stomachs, the stomach issues. You dissolve and you go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you tonight for it, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Some of you are having trouble, trouble with, with a toe or toes. I just get toes very well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, I, I thank you right now, Father God. Lord, I thank you for healing, Father. Now, you know the, 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 the source of what's causing it, Father. Oftentimes, there's something we don't even know about. But, Lord, I thank you for affecting a healing and a cure yes. in these bodies that will affect the toes. And that all uh, neuropathy and all discomfort yes. all leaves Glory. in Glory. Jesus' Glory. name. Or somebody else. Who else is that? Come back to somebody else with a, with a toe. Where are you at? Hallelujah. Glory. Two of them. Two more. Just stand up, Father. We thank you right now, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, there is healing in this place tonight, Lord. Lord, you're a God of blessings, Father God. And you're a God of miracles, Lord. We take the blessings and we take the miracles, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that there's healing tonight in those toes. Never, never, never be a problem again. Amen. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Well, the Lord is good. Amen. Zimbaru Shimon Dara Vandara Vashi Kambaru Devende is the Kambaru Teeta Zimbaru Namu Shimon Dara Vandara. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Magnify you. Give you honor. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you're good. We just stand in awe of you tonight. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Female problem. No, that's a that's a big topic, uh, big subject. And, uh, but uh, female problems. Now that doesn't mean husband problem, does it? <laughs> female, 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 female. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you right now. Father, you said you sent your word. And then you healed them. Father, I thank you. There's healing tonight in this body. Glory, glory, glory. Everything turns around. Father, everything turns around in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Stress, 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 stress. Thank you, Lord, stress. Thank you, Lord, stress. Father, we come. You said you said you were. And healed. Father, you are the stress. We're not asking to relieve it. We want it removed. In Jesus' name. Father, we speak for the things that cause the stress now. You will go now. You, you, 
perish. You're a foul spirit. You have you cause and stress in them. Get out in Jesus' name and go in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, Father. Glory. Glory. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now you have to receive these things by faith. Well, that's mine. I got it. That's mine. They're talking to me. Hallelujah. Somebody don't you go well, blessings are falling tonight. I think broke more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Jump up to push for Taralabata. Oh, Mama Mosha for Tatabata. Bravo book for Shoker, they did it today. Lord, that's a Rabata Katamana Mandra. Zambra Mandra. Blessing him, didn't we? Yes. What you sow is what you reap. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Well, Dana, do you want to come on up here for just a moment? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 I have a word from heaven for you. Is that all right? Okay. You might want to write this down so I don't forget it, okay? I heard the Holy Ghost say, something powerful 
This is a small part. But he said, spent so much time, time trying to put fear and, and, and uh, questions in our heart and mind. And, and God said, ah, just have a good laugh about it. I knew it would be so. And we're supposed to be imitators of God. That's right. Well, you're all crazy over there. That's right. Well, if, 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 if this is crazy, don't wake me up. I'm having too much fun serving the Lord. Yes. These are the things of God. Yes. Pastor Yoli said we want to go a little bit deeper. Then listen, whether you realize it or not, this is deeper. Yes. This is deeper. Well, but not the deeper I was thinking of. Well, this is the deeper he wants you to understand and try to get, try to get across to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Well, the Lord is good. Thank you, Father. I just said. Uh, uh, go with me to Hebrews chapter 6 tonight for a little bit. Hebrews chapter 6. So nice to have all of you out here tonight. We so appreciate you coming. And yeah, it's a, it is a, it's the best place to be. Okay, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us go on unto perfection of maturity, not laying again the foundations of repentance for dead works and of faith towards God, of doctrines of baptism and of laying out of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. Notice it says that there's, there's doctrines, okay? And one of the doctrines is the doctrine of laying out of hands. And so, uh, uh, you know, we, we don't, we haven't really talked a lot about that. I mean, we do lay hands about people, but we haven't done any, any uh, what I would call serious teaching about it. And it's, it's, this is very, very important to, to us because uh, the Bible says over in, in uh, uh, Mark 16, can we go to Mark 16, I think, let's start with verse 17, Mark 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe, or the, the, the actual Greek says, and these signs shall follow the believing ones, the believing ones. Now, there's, there's a lots of believers but they don't believe in these things. They don't believe us for today. And so what happens, because they don't believe us for today, it doesn't happen in their lives or in their walks. But it says these, these signs will follow. These are signs. Signs of the Spirit. Praying in tongues is one of the signs of the Holy Ghost. Manifestation. It says, in, in days that believe the believing ones, in my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. So we do cast out devils. We've been dealing with, with things tonight, spirits tonight, and yes. sickness and disease already. Next verse, please. <clears throat> and they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, and they shall lay their hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. So uh, if you're a believing one, that, and you have hands, then we have the authority and the right to lay our hands upon sick people. And it says, and they might recover. No. Maybe they might. No. Could be, possibly. No. You never know with God. <laughs> we just don't know. No, the word says that they shall recover. Now, this is not a ministry that is, is uh, restricted to uh, the fivefold ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. This is a ministry that is set aside for believers, right. people that are, are the believing ones. Yes. Uh, I was listening to, reading after Brother Hagen, and he talked about a lady that, uh, that they knew, that she, uh, uh, she wasn't, you know, she didn't know what she was called to. She just didn't know. And, uh, uh, she loved the Lord, she loved going to church, but she wasn't a singer. So she couldn't carry a tune, she couldn't sing. She wasn't a speaker, she was a teacher, she couldn't do that. She wasn't a Sunday school teacher, she, she couldn't work nurse or anything like that. <clears throat> and she really felt kind of well left out. Well, what can I do? What can I do? And she got to reading it, she got to reading the scriptures, and she said, well, I've got hands. I've I, I got hands. I, I, I could go pray for the sick. So she 
she started out from, she'd go out for six hours, you know, I think five days a week from nine to three, just going around knocking on doors, you know, anybody sick here, you know, would like some prayer. She started praying for people. Over a period of time, uh, she found that uh, she had great success with this. In fact, uh, she, she would go to people that were terminal that the doctors had given up on. And she sometimes, she'd just sit and read to the scriptures for about two or three days, and then she'd pray for them. And almost invariably, she'd get every one of them healed. Okay? Brother Hagin said that she, there is a ministry of laying out of hands. There are some people that there, there's something about, you know, God uses their hands. Okay? Now, we all can pray for the sick. We can all lay hands upon, you know, our, our family, our children, or, or, or people that desire her. And we can expect to see healing flow. Can you say amen? amen. But there's a number of things that uh, uh, can happen. It's not just, if we just limit it to healing, there, there, there's, we'll miss a lot. Okay? Yeah. And so uh, that's not, you know, there's, there's multitudes of scriptures in the New Testament. And there's, there's a number of scriptures in the Old Testament. So go with me to Numbers, chapter 27 tonight. Numbers chapter 27. <coughs> and we're going to look in verse uh, 18, I believe it is. Okay. <coughs> and the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee, Joshua, the son of Nun, a man who missed the spear, and lay thy hands upon him. And set him before Eleazar on the priest and before all the congregation, and give a charge in their sight. And thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall ask counsel uh, for him after the judgment of your own uh, before the Lord. And <clears throat> at his word shall they go out. And his words that they shall come in, both he and all the children of Israel that were with him. And Moses did as the Lord commanded, and he took Joshua and set him before him, and held Elijah the priest before the congregation, and laid his hands upon him, and gave him charge as the Lord commanded uh, by the hands of Moses. And so it says that a portion that a portion of uh, your your spirit or thy your your anointing would rest upon him. Anointings are transferable to, in, in some cases. We need to understand that, uh, and we need to we need to be careful about. It. I know there's there's many people that go out and they they find the, the grave of William Branham and they lay on top of it, hoping to pick up part of his anointing uh, that was there. And they use the scripture about where uh, Elisha uh, was uh, bones were he was buried. And then uh, many years later, uh, a soldier was killed. They threw him in the cave, and his, his dead body hit those bones of Elisha, and the anointing that was in him raised that man back from the dead. Okay. And so, uh, but that, a, lot of, a lot of things about uh, the laying out of hands and the anointing, uh, they, get, they get scrambled up fairly easy yeah. with people. And so sometimes we... we, we we can get some bad habits, or even ourselves, about laying out hands. And we'll try to get into a little bit of that tonight. But we want to realize that things can be transferred. Anointings can come. Uh, Smith, uh, Lester Summerall laid his hands upon Smith Wigglesworth back at, just before the start of World War II. And uh, uh, Smith Wigglesworth really had a, had a place in his heart for Lester Summerall. And, uh, and he asked the Lord to put that anointing that was in Smith Wigglesworth into Lester Summerall. And, and, and a portion of that went into him. Years later, uh, I met Lester Summerall and he came to my church. And I have a picture in my office of him speaking at, at my church. And then he laid hands on me. For, I don't, to me, it seemed like it was 15 minutes. So he grabbed a hold of me and he shook me and shook me and he said, be blessed. That's all he would say, be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. I mean, he just, just, be blessed. I was in that. I 
Hallelujah. Yeah. So whatever, you know, th there's things that, that travel down through ministers and ministries that they, they can't go into people. And, and as the Lord wills, it can be imparted to other people. Okay? Yeah. You can't just say, well, I'm going to give you some of this and you some of that. It has to be by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, it's a, it's, Brother Hagin calls it this. If it's not the Holy Spirit, it's empty hands laying on empty heads. Okay, and we want to remember that. Because these, these things are, uh, uh, they're spiritual, they're real, uh, they're holy. <coughs> they're not to be played with. Okay. And uh, uh, in Deuteronomy 34, we see, Deuteronomy 34, Verse 9, I believe it is. 24, verse 9. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom and for Moses had laid his hand on him. And the children of Israel hearkened on him as, did, as the, the Lord commanded. <coughs> so things, spiritual things can be imparted. Uh, you know, uh, blessings can be imparted. Uh, I like this one. In Acts chapter eight, here's, here's a good one. Uh, I've done this this many many times, many many times, probably several hundreds of times. Acts chapter eight, in verse fourteen. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, <coughs> who met when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. I have laid my hands on hundreds of people over a 40 year period, and, and I, I have seen virtually, I can't say 100%, but I would say uh, a very, very high 90, 94, 95, 96, 97% of them get filled with the Holy Ghost. Two weeks ago, several or a month or two ago, we had uh, I think five ladies from Don's house come up, and we laid hands, prayed them, and they they received, all received the, the Holy Spirit too. <coughs> so the, the Holy Spirit can be uh, given to people by laying on a hand. So they laid their hands on them, and they received. You also find the same thing happening in Acts chapter nineteen. Verse 1, and it came to pass, while Paul was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said unto him, We have not heard so much, but there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, uh, What were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. So and he said, Well, John just baptized unto the baptism of repentance, <coughs> saying to the people that they should believe on him. Somebody, I remember somebody, there's a picture of them. Oh, gosh. Only, only when you start teaching the word of God. Yeah. Like that devil will fix it. <laughs> trying to ascertain what place of the church. <laughs> to the Lord. Most of us are wanting the Lord to minister to us. 
But this, this was a service where they came to minister to the Lord. The Lord has a need to be ministered to, to be worshipped, and to be praised, and he loves that. Yes. And so when they did that, when the blessings go up, the blessings can come down. Yes. And it says, and the Holy Ghost said, mm -hmm. separate unto me Barnabas and Saul, uh, for the work were unto I called them, verse 3. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands upon them, they sent them away. So there is a place of consecration to the ministry, or being sent off into the ministry through the laying out of hands. And there's other scriptures that do that, but we don't have time to go through all of those tonight. But just so that you can see uh, that the hands, God uses hands. And if you have hands, uh, God can use you, okay? You say, well, I'm not a very good speaker. Well, you know, your hands can, let your hands do the talk. Okay? Then in Matthew 19, Matthew 19, again, there's, there's, there's piles and piles of scriptures that cover this. Matthew 19, verse 13. It says, uh, then there were brought unto him little children, that he should put his hand on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked him. Now parents were bringing their children. Uh, parents brought their children to a Jesus service. Wherever Jesus was, they would bring their children. And the disciples rebuked them, saying, you know, this ministry is for big people. This is in front of the little kids. Get them back to the nursery. Get them out of here. And uh, Jesus was not well pleased. Jesus said, some of the little children forbid them not to come unto me. For our such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. Now go with me to Mark chapter 10. So we find Jesus laying hands on, on small children, babies, toddlers, uh, just praying for them. Uh, Mark, uh, Matthew, uh, Mark, 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 I got Mark, Mark 10, I'll go with Matthew and Mark 10, verse 13, and they brought young children to him, that he should touch them, and his disciples rebuked those that brought them, but when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, much displeased, and said, suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Verily I say unto you, whose servant shall not receive the kingdom of heaven as a little child, he should not inherit, he, he should not enter there. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. He took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and he blessed them. I was just trying to meditate on that. I wonder what those children's lives were after. Were they different from other little boys and girls? Did it last for a week, a month, a year, or the whole life? Oh, that, I'd like to believe by Kathleen that, that their whole life was, was dramatically impacted because Jesus blessed them. They were blessed. Many times parents can be cursing their children and not blessing their children. Well, I just want them to do what's right. Well, uh, Jesus, you know, he just blessed them, you know, blessed them. So there's blessings. We're talking about a blessing service. Blessings can flow through the laying on of hands. <coughs> blessings can be imparted. Blessings can change people's lives. You say, well, I came for a miracle. Well, miracles are wonderful, and we've, we've seen some of those. But uh, blessings will take you to a place that you don't need a miracle. See, a miracle is you need, you need to be bailed out. God, you got to do something now. It's, it's, it's curtains or whatever. Things aren't going to be good. And he does provide miracles for us, no doubt about it. But when you move into the blessings, you don't, you don't get to those places and have to be rescued, you know, at the last minute by the Calvary, yeah. you know. And so uh, the blessing is, is, is better. It's a better place to live. But that doesn't mean that miracles have been done away with either. And we need to realize that. So when hands could be laid upon, you say, well, you should, uh, small children. Was it just for small children? No, it says be, you be like small children, too. Yeah. 
you can't be blessed. You can let God bless you. Hallelujah. You say, well, how do I get that? Well, you can, you can have somebody, when that, when that thing is moving, that anointing is there, you, people can pray for you, and it can, it can, can flow through people's hands. Okay? It can have, I have had things flow through my hands. Once was a, a, a great surge of power. It only happened once, but other times I've said things were, could, would, go, would go, I'd say, well, there's a there, there. I could send something to go through. But about 98% of the time, I feel nothing. But I'm not doing it because I, I feel something or don't feel something. I'm doing it out of faith. And other people say, oh, I felt that, I felt that. I think, oh, well, somebody felt something. I <laughs> feel that. But it's not about feelings. It's about faith. And so, you know, I don't think those little children, they laid hands on their eyes, roll back in the socket, and blah, 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 you know, like that. I think they were just, they're just blessed. I think they slept at night. I think that they were good little boys and girls and obeyed their mom and dads. I think that, that uh, you know, they, they, their lives were just touched in, in such a way. Uh, perhaps angels were, um, had more of a charge of them or whatever. But he blessed us. <clears throat> Jesus thought it was important. He thought it was important. Now, you know what? We don't find Jesus going out looking for children to bless. Jesus is not looking for children to bless. Parents should have enough responsibility to bring their children to a place where they can be blessed. Amen. We should have enough to say, Alan, you need to be here. You say, well, I don't get anything out of church. Well, you just set the blessing and get out of here. You know, you, you get blessed just sitting in here. I had a man, I, I shared it before, his name was Leon Malote. And Leon was the premier, lead, best attorney in the city of McAllister. And uh, he loved to sue. And he loved to sue the hospitals. False, you know, false practice, you know, all these things. They, 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 they were in terror of Leon Below. He came to my church, sat on the front row like Pastor Nelly. And he said to me, I don't like you. I don't like your preaching. I don't like the people here. I don't like this church. I don't like anything about it. I said, well, Leah, how do you even come? He said, well, I found that when I come, my whole week goes better. Oh, something, a blessing would come on him. A blessing would come on him. We had, uh, he had asked me one time, Leon was an alcoholic, a fall down drunk. And he wasn't a happy drunk. He, he, he could get quite nasty. But I, he liked me for some reason. And, uh, and I liked Leon too. And so he, he called me one day and he said, uh, Pastor, uh, my friend, he, he's in the hospital. Will you, will you go down and pray for him? I said, well, okay, Leon, what's his name? He gave me his name. So I get down to the hospital and Leon's waiting for me. And I said, Leon, you know, he's my friend. We're, we're, we're going to go pray for him. Well, his friend was, I think, like 28 years old. And he had, I think he had cirrhosis of the liver. He was dying and he was expected to die that night. And so we go up. And they've got these two big, massive double doors into the ICU, ICU unit. And you're supposed to ring a bell or something. The nurse will come out and they'll talk to you. Mm -hmm. Leon just bangs those doors wide open. Mm -hmm. Nurse comes scurrying out there. And, and uh, I think she must have recognized him. And uh, she said, what are you doing? What are you doing in this place? And uh, Leon said, my, my friend is here. Uh, and I, he, he's come and we're going to pray for him. And she said, no, no, you can't come in. He says, he, he's my, my I, I want to pray for him. She says, it's only family that can see him. I'm sorry. He said, he's my brother. <laughs> she said, oh, okay. <laughs> Don't take Leon off. She said, no, but you have to be very, very quiet. And you can't stay talk out loud to everybody. You only stay for a minute or two, then you've got to leave. So we go in there, and uh, I said, well, Leanne, we'll just, we'll just be here for a moment. 
And uh, so Leanne gets on one side of the bed, I get on the other side of the bed, and the guy's in a coma. Young man, just total coma, tubes all down and everything. And so I laid my hand and I closed my eyes, and I said, now in the name of Jesus, all of a sudden I can feel his body just jerking and moving all around. I said, ooh, this looks good. And it's Leanne pulling him up. Oh, 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 oh. him up. Oh, oh. And uh, I said, Leon, you look pretty dumb, pretty dumb. But uh, we laid hands on him, and, and, and then we left. And uh, the next day, I, I was, I called up there to see uh, see about to how this young man was doing, because he was, uh, he was supposed to die in the night. <coughs> and they said they released him because they couldn't find anything wrong with him. Wow. Sent him yes, home. Sir. That's a true story. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And uh, but see, God, God even could use a drunk person, and He did. But see, there, there's just a blessing. There's a blessing. Listen, listen. There's there's blessing in getting around men and women of God. There's great blessings that God has. Okay, and sometimes we don't realize it, we don't think about it, <coughs> but there are blessings that that flow from Him, from the Lord, from the Spirit of God. Um, and uh, go, go with me to First Timothy. First Timothy, chapter five. I have one right here. Already. Yeah. Verse 22, it says, Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partakers of other men's sins, keep thyself pure. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Those are things that we have to learn to be careful about. It's about just going up and laying hands on people. Why? Because, because things flow out of us, but things flow out of them. And so, uh, uh, there's, uh, like I, I've said before, you, you, don't, you never would go up to Brother Hagen and say, oh, let me lay a hand and pray for you. Uh-uh. I don't know you, and you're not going to touch me. You're not going to lay hands on Kenneth Copeland, Gloria Copeland, Jesse DePlantis. I mean, it's wonderful what these people are. They're not going to let you or I lay their hands, our hands upon them. Why? Because they, they realize that, that things get imparted, okay? And so, uh, I remember one time, I was, uh, <clears throat> I've shared this before too, I had gone to a Happy Hunter meeting uh, with the Happy Hunters. Mm -hmm. And her, what was her name? Uh, Francis, Francis Hunter, and her husband's name was something like Mr. Hunter. <laughs> I had I'd never been to a a uh, 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 Francis Hunter meeting, and this, this couple, they were a very, very funny couple, and, and it was held in a high school gymnasium, and they must have been three or four hundred people there, and, and I'd never seen a crowd that was the biggest crowd I ever saw, and, and uh, so they were they were ministering, and they, they asked uh, how many people you know wanted to be free of cigarettes and that smoked, and so there was quite a number of people that went up. And made each, they made like three, three, three lines, four lines, and there must have been 10, 15, 20 people on each line. There was a lot of people out there for cigarettes. And they said, well, uh, if you've ever been delivered of cigarettes or don't smoke, and, but you're a believer, just come and stand behind somebody. So uh, they were all filing behind somebody. And finally there was just this one big tall lady up there, and nobody was behind her. So I just went up behind her. And... Uh, I think we were like about the third row back, and they they started on one end, and they just started going down like everybody's falling. They're catching people falling, 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 get down the line. And I see that they're just coming my way, so I'm I'm getting ready. I'm gonna catch her when she falls, you know. And come to her, put her hands their hands on her. Nothing happened, and so they didn't take they didn't stay with her. They just kept on going, and and so. 
it looked like the, the whole forest had been cut down for one, except for one lone tree, and that was that one lady standing there. And I felt so bad for her, she didn't fall out. I thought, oh no, the poor thing, she didn't fall down. So I reached up, put my hand on her shoulder, and when she turned around, uh, she scared the living daylights out of me. I mean, she was so full of the devil. I mean, her eyes, to me, I think they were glowing. I mean, she was, it was wicked, it was evil. And I go, Francis, Francis, <laughs> get over here. Somebody better get over here. And when I turned around, she had disappeared. I don't know where she went to, but she just vanished. But uh, there was something in her. And, and uh, uh, you want to just be careful. Just, you know, uh, you just want to learn to be careful. Things flow out of people. Say, well, you got any scripture for that? Yes, I do. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Over in, in Mark chapter 5, it was the woman with the issue of blood. She says, if I can but touch the hem of his garment. Yeah. Well, if good things can flow out of people, like the anointing, then, then other things can flow out of people that may not be so good for us. So the Bible cautions us. Be very careful. Now, we'll, we'll hands, lay hands on people tonight, if, if, if you desire that. But we just, we just don't lay hands on people to lay hands on. Usually there's a, a, a purpose for it. And, uh, there's so many scriptures on healings, okay? It, it says that uh, 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 you know, Jesus laid his hands on multi the Jairus came to Jesus and said, come lay your hands on my daughter and she will be healed. So there was a, a reputation that Jesus had about his hands and just laying his hands on sick people. It was it was basically pretty much guaranteed that, that they would be healed. He said, my daughter is at the point of death. Come lay your hands on her and she will live. Okay? And so, uh, but also in the Gospel of Mark, it said that he went to his own hometown. And they said, well, do the same miracles you've done every other place. It says that he laid his hands on a few and could do nothing. And that's so strange. The Son of God, Jesus, the, the, with the, that, that tremendous story, couldn't do anything because people didn't believe in that particular town. Other towns, they did. And so he couldn't do anything. Nothing would flow up to him. But this, but this man said, he, so he, he had, you know, you would think, well, Jesus had 100% success rate. No, he didn't. Not in his own hometown. People said, well, the reason that Jesus healed people was to prove he was the Son of God. Well, in Nazareth, he didn't prove it any. Just didn't prove it. So, uh, again, healing uh, is the children's bread. People, I, I've laid hands on, I don't know, thousands of people in 40 years. And I have seen multitudes of miracles. Multitudes of miracles. I was here was a week ago. Tuesday night at prayer, and uh, I've encouraged you to come down. We haven't been down. Come down. Uh, we have a tremendous time. And the Lord said, "Go when you go home. Lay your hands on your wife. She'll be healed." And so I, I, I remembered that. I got home and I was brushing my teeth, and the Lord reminded me, "Go home. Lay your hands on your wife." So I went home. So I just on the paper. I laid my hands on her, and, and, I, and I prayed for her. So a couple of days later, she says, "The Lord ever said anything to you?" And I thought. Oh yeah, that's right. I said, oh, you make a little hand, lay hands on you, you'd be just fine. You'd be healed. So I'm, as far as I'm concerned, as far as, far as God's concerned, she's fine. Mm -hmm. Amen. Why? Because we did what the Word of God said. They shall lay their hands on sick, they shall recover. And so recovery isn't always an instantaneous thing, but it is. it, it does happen. <clears throat> so we have that right. You, you, you have a ministry of laying on of hands yourself. We're praying for people. You can pray for people to be filled with the Spirit. You can pray for people to be healed. But just be a little bit careful about just, like I said, lay hands suddenly on no man. Just, just be careful. We have to have some common sense. Because I, I tell you, it's like Brother Hagen said, that it's laying empty hands on empty heads. It, it, it causes problems. Okay? I have seen abuse after abuse after abuse over 40 years. I have seen people lay their hands upon other people and call them 
into ministry positions, and they were no more called than were called to be astronauts. It was just simply they, they, they got excited and thought, well, the Lord told me to tell you that you're, you are this and you are that. Well, on occasions God has done that, but he primarily does it through the fivefold ministry. Now, I, I have a little book in my office called uh, uh, the, 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 the Fivefold Ministry, yes? And it says this very plainly. There are no prophets in the laity. They are in the Fivefold Ministry. There are no prophets that are anything businessmen or other things. Okay. And to want to be in the office of a prophet, you got to have your head examined. you got to have your head examined. Because uh, the, 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 uh, the scorn, the people just, they, they just, uh, they mock and everything. I remember when, when the Lord the Lord told Brother Hagen that he was going to be in the office of the prophet, he said, please don't do that. Please. Please. Let me sit on the back row. Let me just, let me just, I'll be the best deacon. He said, no, I'll call you to stand in the office of the prophet. Well, it sounds so glamorous. It just sounds so good. Until people start taking pot shots at you. And getting after you. Pastor Hooper, he, he can hardly post anything on Facebook without getting somebody shooting at him. I was, I was, I, I, I like to watch, get, I like to watch Cindy Day get my weather. How many know who Cindy Day is on Facebook? Yesterday was her last post. She said, I'm sick and tired of all the crap that people give me. She was wishing people a happy Canada Day or something. And she said, this is it. This is my last time here. I'm not going to do it. Why? Because there's there's people out there that I mean they're gonna shoot shoot at you. There'll be people that will they'll just be be mocking us for the laughing tonight. They don't do, let, them, let them let them mock. Amen. God God was busy working. Okay, and and they'll never they'll never get what what God was doing until they open up to what the Spirit of God wants. Okay? And it's not that we try to control the Spirit of God, but we we endeavor to yield to the Spirit of God. I pray, when I come up, I pray for great accuracy in the word, to teach the word, accuracy, because I don't want to be saying something that is, it is not right, because we're going to have to stand in front of the Lord, and we will have to give an account of, if you're saying, well, thus say the Lord, well, the Lord told me to tell you this, you, we will have to give account for these things. Yeah. We better be sure of that, that the Lord said, he said, it'd be better to, it's better to say, well, I just kind of felt sense to my heart that maybe this was going on or that was going on. That way, you know, you, you got some wiggle room, but you say, let's say the Lord, and the Lord doesn't say it. Mm -hmm. And I'm good. So, I thought the Lord said this. You know, especially when it didn't come to pass. So, how do we get off on that? <laughs> but these are things, you know, we're, we're, we're in a time where, where there's going to be more deception and more deception and more and more people. You know, God gives people words. I understand that. Okay? But but he doesn't he doesn't have you know uh, not that I know of he doesn't uh, you know have a, have a word for every single person every single time that, you know every day. That's right. Thank you for that one. That's right. <laughs> well, that's just how the Lord uses me. Well, yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm <help> pastor now. <laughs> the word is the word. Amen. And so God can use people. He really can. It's just learning to yield ourselves. And and I and you, you watch me minister to people and I tell them if you if I miss it, you tell me. You tell me if I miss it. You you stand up, you say that that that, that this is not right. Okay. And, and it has happened. People say, no, that, that's just, that's not accurate. That's not right. And uh, I will apologize to him. I said, I'm just 
Well, I just want to share what I felt the Lord said to me in my heart. Mm -hmm. And if I miss it, then I do apologize. Mm -hmm. Because you, we all can miss it. Yeah. And so that, that's important to remember. Yes. So say, well, how can you miss it if it's God? Because it's the, you're simply the hose that he flows through. Yes. You're only a hose, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you try to control mm -hmm. the flow yes. and control what is, is said, and you want to say what, you know, Bible talks a lot about, that, especially back in the Old Testament, about, about false prophets. Amen. False prophets prophesying, thus saith the Lord. You, you will have victory. You will trounce them. You will, you will, you know, crack your heads wide open. And then they get old. Get uh, uh, um, Elisha. Or is that uh, Elijah? <laughs> said, they ain't going to go that way, boys. They said, you never have a good word for us. Well, what you want is a God word. Yeah, that's right. A lot of people got good words. The Bible says over, I think it's in First or Second Corinthians, with good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. Yeah. Yeah. Good words. Mm -hmm. Good words. Yeah. Good words. They deceive the hearts of the simple. So we have to be careful in the last days that we don't get deceived. Now, we all want to be used of God, but we want to be used accurately. Okay? Yes. And, if, and if we're not certain, maybe the best thing to do is not to say something. There's many times I just, I just don't say anything. Yes. And you say, well, I see you do it, Pastor, all the time. You don't see the, the, the reluctance that I go through, and, and I'm sitting there for some time with the Lord just, Saying, oh, this is what I want you to do. I said, but Lord, you know, if I say that, then, then they'll all get upset and get angry and get mad. And he said, well, you asked me. And he'd say this to me. Didn't you ask me for the gifts of the Spirit? Didn't you ask me for the gift of the word of the knowledge and gift, gift of the word of wisdom? Didn't you ask me for that? I said, yes, sir, I did. He said, then then I want you to give that. I said, Lord, but what if they get upset? He said, well, let me deal with that. So... But see, there's a ministry of laying on of hands. That if you got hands, God can use you. God can use you. So we want to pray tonight. I told Deborah we were going to pray. If Deborah would like prayer tonight, we're going to lay hands upon Deborah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Look at what she's coming. Go with me to, to Psalms 24. Psalms 24. reason um, we were careful about who we let touch us yeah. okay verse verse 4 he that has clean hands and a pure heart clean hands pure heart you know uh, some of the <coughs> There's a well-known ministry that I'm aware of, Greg's aware of. They've ministered for Greg a number of times, and and uh, he said, Dad, there's something not right here, something not right. Well, this ministry seems to be growing and everything, you know, getting more recognition. And uh, he's even out at the worship barn. And... Uh, uh, and Greg was here at the time, and, and uh, the gentleman was speaking to Greg and said uh, to him, you know, Greg, if you really want to make some money, this is, this is what you do. Tell everybody you've got an orphanage, mm -hmm. and the money will pour in. Oh, oh, oh. The money will pour in, he says, because he has an orphanage. He said, but Greg says, well, I don't have an orphanage. orphanage. He says, you don't need an orphanage to tell them you've got an orphanage. People will know. Now, would you want somebody that has a reputable, uh, supposedly a reputable healing ministry laying his hands on you? Well, I just thought he was just the, the, the cat's meow. I thought he was okay. Be careful. Be careful. Well, I'm out at the, at the worship bar myself. I'm there, and um, um, oh, he, he's 
part of the global William Wood, yes. and his wife was there. And so uh, uh, they were ministering, and she was up ministering and everything too. And so I'm, I, I, I sat back in the back, you know, like 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 Carolyn. <laughs> I, I I don't want anybody, you know, particularly calling me out, giving me words. And the moment that the service was over, his wife made a beeline for me. I mean, she just put that microphone on and she came right for me. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh Lord, what am I going to do? And, you know, I want to be polite. I don't want to say, you know, get away from me, mm -hmm. anything like that. But uh, she said, uh, Pastor Bonnie, can you lay your hands on me? She said, my neck is so hurt so bad and I need a healing. I need a healing. Well, she, she got this pretty good jerk going on at times. I don't know if anybody ever saw that. Well, is it okay if we just teach her just to be honest with you for a moment? Where in the world is that in the Bible? Where? Who was the most anointed man ever on the face of the earth? Jesus. Did he have the herky-jerkies? What we were told, that, that, that's, that's the anointing. Not necessarily. But see, if it's an anointing, I shouldn't have to pray for her neck. Exactly. I mean, when, when, you're, when you're doing gymnastics with your neck, but she, I, I, she just singled me out. She said, could you please pray for my neck? And I did. I believe that touched her. Okay? But I'm, again, however they want to minister, that's their business. I don't know how we got up on that. We should not. Lord, forgive us if we're saying something we shouldn't. But how are we ever going to equip it? But if we don't tell the truth, okay? we have to tell the truth. <clears throat> Can the Holy Ghost make you jerk out? You better believe it. <laughs> I, I've had the Holy Now I, I, I'm not much of a jerker, but I have then I have rolled on the floor. <laughs> I have rolled on the floor. Holy I'm, yeah. <laughs> I thought they ain't no such thing as Holy Roller until I was oh, yeah. out rolling on the floor right there. Had no, you know. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost can make you jerk, not make you a jerk. He can get the jerk out of you, I think. Yeah. But if you, I got, I got the jerk anointing. <laughs> get that jerk out of you. Glory. Yeah, a number of years ago, Brother Bentley was here, right, right on this. Right here. <laughs> he said, uh, somebody here needs to dance. Yeah. And he said, uh, Quake, who happened to be, uh, to be close by, he said, uh, have you ever danced? And he said, no. And, and Brother Baby got his hand and said, dance! And, and he fell to the floor. He's spinning around, spinning around, spinning around. I mean, just going around and around and around and around. I asked him later on, I said, what happened? He said, I was trying to stand up. It was like a, the floor was grease. Couldn't even, get, couldn't even get up. Now, the Holy Ghost can do things like that. I, I understand that. So please, please don't get upset with me. But, but realize, too, that, the, uh, that some of the stuff that we see, uh, we said this the other day, uh, uh, some of the running, I, I believe in running. I, I believe you can run by the, be inspired by the Holy Spirit, but some of it's just the flesh. Okay? Dancing in the Spirit while we're at it. While we're at it. I, I've seen people doing the do-si-do. -si -do. I've seen them do square dancing moves. And and where where is that found in the Bible? But, well, that, that's, you know, are we going to do a waltz, you know? I got up with Lady at, at, at the funeral Friday, last Friday. And they were talking about, well, if you like dancing, if you feel like dancing, dance. So I, I, nobody's dancing, so I grabbed her by the hand. I led her out here to the dance floor. And I, I gave them my best moves. <laughs> she had a big I was dancing with another woman. Yeah. You said, well, that was, that was stupid of you, Pastor. It was so terrible of you. Why, why, how would you lower yourself for something like that? Mm -hmm. Flavius, Flavius' friends from Ghana and those that were watching said, oh, that was so amazing to see the pastor to get up here and just, just, it, 
And they all were dancing. I don't know what it is. But they said, that was so amazing. It was so amazing. It so blessed us. See, the, the things that we do ought to be a blessing. It ought to be a blessing to, to us or to people. It should bless them. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, this, uh, gosh, it's almost quarter to ten to nine now. Man, where did that go? Deborah, Deborah, Deborah. She was mentioning to me that, uh, that uh, just some, some breathing issues there. Okay. And uh, uh, I'm going to get my beautiful wife to come up here. Uh, I'm going to get Pastor Nelly on one side and Pastor, Pastor Zenny on the other side. And uh, just, just actually, I say it this way, honey, mm -hmm. you come over here and Pastor Nelly go there. One hand on her chest, one hand on her back. Mm -hmm. One hand there, yeah, you do it. One hand. Uh, one, one on her chest then. Right there. Yeah, right there. Okay. So then I'm going to put my hands on her too. So Father, we come right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, you said we would lay our hands upon the sick. They would recover, Father. I know Deborah's believing with all of her heart. She's believing that the there's healing for her. She has suffered enough. We command the same. Go! In Jesus' name. Leave her now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for her. We thank you, Lord, for effecting a healing and a cure. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We believe. We believe. You may be here tonight, never been filled with the Holy Ghost. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking with other tongues. Say, do I have to speak in tongues to go to heaven? No, you don't have to speak in tongues to go to heaven, but you might as well get the power to those while you're down here. <laughs> if you need hands laid on for healing tonight, we will do that. And if you need the prayer of agreement, it doesn't say that we don't have to lay hands on for the prayer of agreement, but it's a very powerful, powerful prayer. So what are you praying for tonight, Kathleen? Healing. What? Healing. Healing. Manifestation. You want to tell us what, where is it private? Eyes. Eyes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just come right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, there's a gift of the Spirit called the gift of work and miracles. Father, we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the gift of working and manifest in Kathleen's body. Father, that when she saw as a young child, Father God, I thank you that you're going to restore, restore, restore those eyesight, restore what the doctors cannot do, you can do. What surgery cannot do, you can do. You're still the great physician. You're still the, the great surgeon, Father. Nothing's too hard. In Jesus' name, we command the times to be open, to be healed. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. We trust you for it. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Hallelujah. Well, the Lord is good. Sunday morning, we're, we're back here Sunday morning. Sunday night is uh, the prophet who will be on the big screen with us. Uh, Greg is going to be ministering to us. He's uh, uh, he, He'll be uh, from uh, Broken Bow, Nebraska. And uh, like Brother Beck, that he will be able to see us and we can see him and so he can minister to people and, and it'll be a, I know it'll be a great blessing. So if anybody else would, re, would desire any kind of prayer, we would love to pray with you. Thank you so much for coming. Take what you've got. Take your hands and start start using them. Just start saying, you know, the Lord says, you know, if, if you lay your hands for us, they will recover. Amen? Amen. All right. God bless. God bless.